The death of Arthur Morgan hit players hard, and even though we all knew it was coming, it didn't make it any less painful. But what Rockstar Games surprised us with was a two-chapter length epilogue where we took control of Red Dead Redemption 1 protagonist John Marston, set eight years after Morgan's death in 1899. Some players misunderstood the epilogue, even claiming that the entire thing wasn't needed, but today I'm going to be discussing why I personally feel that the epilogue was critical to the story of Red Dead Redemption. As always, if you guys enjoy the following, you all know what to do, and if you're new here and aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. You're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and with that being said, let's get into today's content. Firstly, where some games, and Mad Max brings to mind here, allows you, after completing the final mission, to go back a short time before the finale and tie up any loose ends, Red Dead Redemption 2 instead continues on with the narrative, giving the player more of the story to complete. And not just a small portion either, we get to experience a further 10 to 20 hours of gameplay as John Marston. We get to witness how the character of John matures over time, going from gang member to family man. I know a lot of gamers who hadn't played the original Red Dead Redemption, certainly purchased it and continued on with John's story, so the epilogue gave them a taste of the protagonist, something of which they were yet to experience. One of the bigger issues that players had with the epilogue was the vast changing of pace after the fall of Arthur Morgan. They went from an action-packed and heart-wrenching final few missions to becoming a farmhand, but let me explain why I feel this was necessary. We needed time to both process and grieve about what we'd just witnessed, and even though the first couple of missions at Pronghorn Ranch seemed a little tedious, it was just what we needed to give us time to comprehend what we'd just been through. Milking cows and cleaning out stables wasn't challenging in the game, and it required very little more than button prompts, so it gave us a moment to collect our thoughts. After leaving Pronghorn Ranch, we got to see how the Marston family home of Beaches Hope came to be. We learned that it was Abigail's dream for their family, and watched as John, with the assistance of Uncle and Charles, build the home from the ground up. This answered some questions for fans of the original title. All we knew about John's past during Red Dead Redemption 1 was that he was in a gang and left them after they left him to die, but we never knew how he'd become a farmer owning his own land, and why Uncle was part of the family when he wasn't actually a relative. This was a gap filler that we needed. The epilogue also allowed us to tie up any loose ends we had, even with the other characters of the title. Charlotte Balfour springs to mind here as an example. It was nice to see that as John, after learning of Arthur helping Charlotte during Chapter 5, he was able to visit the lady and inform her of Arthur's passing. Charlotte wouldn't have made it after the passing of her husband and had Arthur Morgan to thank her for her life, so it was nice to bring closure to the widow. We also got closure on what happened to the remaining gang members after the final battle of Beavers Hollow, such as Tilly Jackson being both married and expecting, Mary Beth fulfilling her dreams of becoming a writer, Pearson opening a store in Rhodes, reuniting with Sadie, Charles and Uncle, and lastly, informing Rainsfall of the passing of Arthur. We also got to close the story on Micah Bell, and saw Dutch one last time before John would meet him four years later in the sequel. John and Abigail's relationship during the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2 was nothing short of rocky and unstable, but we got to see how close they had become towards the latter stages of the epilogue, eventually blossoming into marriage. We saw how John went from outlaw, who had very little time for his family, evolve into a more caring person in an attempt to provide a better life for his wife and child, after absorbing some inspirational final words from Arthur Morgan. The epilogue also gave us as much time as we needed for John to spend quality time with them, as during Red Dead Redemption 1, we only got very little of this towards the end of the title. People who knew John from the first game will come to realise that in the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2, he was a very different person, and the epilogue provided us with this growth over time becoming a character we would see in the first game. He evolved from not caring very much to be willing to both kill and die for his wife and child. Aside from the character arc, players also got to see changes made to the location we'd visited and become so used to 
during their time as author. Buildings are being constructed, NPCs are aged and once thriving businesses were now a mere shell of their former selves. On top of all that, we were introduced to an entirely new additional setting in New Austin. I realise that some may feel that this state feels pretty empty, but this design was intentional. New Austin wasn't as advanced as its northern counterpart, the west wasn't as tamed just yet. The outdoor lifestyle was still pretty active in these parts, even four years later in 1911. This also gave us an opportunity to compare beloved locations from the first title, such as Armadillo and Tumbleweed, the latter of which was still thriving before its demise somewhere between 1907 and 1911. The ending credits, available after completing the epilogue, also filled in some narrative gaps, primarily how Edgar Ross and his newly formed Bureau of Investigation actually caught up with John Marston, even though he now lived in an entirely different state to the one that the Van der Linde gang had roamed through years prior, with the exception of the town of Blackwater of course. He tracked him down by questioning those who had encountered the gang members previously, even though it took some time. If we didn't have this, it would have left us with the question lingering on how the agents found John and his family. To finalise, the epilogue did an excellent job of bridging the gap between 1899 and 1911, and even though some people didn't seem to take to it too well, I feel it was absolutely critical that we had to experience our time as John Marston before returning to the original Red Dead Redemption to complete the entire story. Imagine if there was no epilogue whatsoever, how many unanswered questions would we have had, such as how the Marston family ended up at Beecher's Hope, what happened to the surviving gang members, how did John's character change so much between 1899 and 1911, and how did Edgar Ross track him down? I'd imagine there would be a lot more gamers angry about this than those who didn't feel the epilogue was necessary. The Red Dead Redemption 2 epilogue, in my opinion, was something we most definitely needed. Well there you have it, for what it's worth. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed your time as John Marston in the epilogue, or did you personally feel that your time with Red Dead Redemption 2 ended when Arthur passed? As I stated in the beginning, this was just my personal opinion on the matter. If you guys enjoyed what you saw today, you all know what to do, and if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. If you wish to get in touch, you can find any and all social medias in the video description below. Also, you can become a full member of the channel by clicking the join button on my homepage, where for just £2.99 per month, you'll get such features as early access to primary videos, among other things. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.